I think that when you run towards things that are hard and when you run towards things that other people maybe are hesitant to do or are kind of afraid of for one reason or another, you're giving yourself a purpose and you're giving yourself a meaningful pathway forward in your life because those are the situations where you can have the most impact and do the most good. I define inspired purpose as a sense of direction, a, 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 a trajectory for your life. And this inspiration is really about passion. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. And of course, that inspiration comes from the Holy Spirit, comes from the Spirit of God that inspires us to make a difference, to restore the world to what He intended from the beginning. We're establishing this foundation where the students can then go and do the things that they want to do. We guide them in how to think, how to learn, uh, how to come at a problem um, and be inquisitive, how to read uh, and understand the scientific literature and present on it. Everything we do, everything we touch, everything that we try to teach our students um, is revolves around Christ. Um, our students have to make a decision before they graduate from Harding, how are they going to use their talents for the glorification of the kingdom, for um, to, to live their lives in a way that's different from what the world considers success. Sometimes what we're doing is not even necessarily academic. It's just, it's, it's relational. I mean, it, it's, it's not transactional, it's, it is relational. I think in Harding we care very much about the future of our students, not just the present, not just our interactions with them in the classroom, but our interactions with them extend beyond the classroom. We believe that you really cannot instruct or train or mentor without relationships. Their formation as people, as disciples of Jesus, as people who will contribute vocationally um, well and responsibly through their career paths. All those things matter to us. It really is, like I said before, a close-knit community that, you know, everyone's looking out for one another. You develop a lot of close relationships, especially with your teachers too. You don't get that in a lot of other settings where you know your teachers, you're in a small classroom with them, you can ask them questions. If it was in big lecture halls, you wouldn't have the opportunities. Christian education pushes you to diligence and excellence in all that you do. But the community aspect is one that cannot be replicated. You're not just a number, you're not just a warm body taking up a seat. That is the personable relationships, the respect and rapport that you're gonna build between the professor, the student, and even yourself and your peers is astronomically higher and is a complete game changer as you are preparing for your future career. Harding University, more than any other place that I've had an opportunity to work at or I have colleagues or friends at, uh, does a tremendous job in comprehensively bringing together stellar academics, uh, an authentic Christian perspective or worldview in such a relational way. I think Probably every university would say that we have really good curriculum and really good courses, but I think something that sets Harding apart is the individualized research attention that the students get. Our faculty have about the same amount of years of work experience as they do academic experience. Uh, me, for instance, I've got 30 years in the industry and 10 years academically. But what we're bringing to our student body is an opportunity to learn from us, because we've already been there. Um, but we also have the breadth of understanding that students need more than just the academics to be prepared. We take internships really seriously for our students to get a taste of what that career would actually look like in a real world setting. When they come back in that fall semester, you can tell in those classes they take after that internship, they have ears to hear in a way that they may not have had prior to that internship experience. And I also think that's one reason that our graduates are very much sought after. It's interesting, I've been in a couple of internships. Last summer I, I interned with Walmart um, in their accounting and finance development uh, program. And you, uh, you have an internship with students from Notre Dame and uh, Cornell and University of Texas. 
uh, and you're like, oh wow, like I go to Harding, like am I gonna be prepared? I have just found over and over that uh, Harding students are really, really well equipped um, to already come in with a lot of information that I think a lot of students don't. Um, but if they don't have the information, I feel like we're also very equipped to know how to approach a problem. One of the things that's going to happen, regardless of where somebody goes to school, is when they leave home, they start to make their faith their own. That's a huge step because they have to start making their own decisions about if they're going to go to church, if they're going to keep up some type of a spiritual discipline regimen, if they are going to like let God guide them. But there's also a lot of questioning that takes place. Now, wouldn't it be better to ask those questions at a place where you're surrounded by faith-affirming people? Coming into Harding, my faith was a at a little bit of a rocky spot. I can say that confidently now. I didn't know where I was. I, I knew that God had been involved in my life. It's just through a lot of past things, I didn't know what I thought about it all. I've been through a lot of hard times and I just didn't know, okay, if God's in my life, I can't see it yet. And throughout my four years, I have learned what it's like to have unconditional love. My faith is not only a lot stronger, but I have a better understanding of what it's like to love like Christ. Um, and I don't think I would have gotten that if I had been anywhere else but here. It's about cultivating passion and a, a desire to do something significant with your life. The pursuit of inspired purpose comes when you find that collision between what you love and what you hate. What, where you find what uh, you're good at, what you're interested in, what you think God has gifted you to do. And where does that collide with something that's broken, something that needs to be fixed? Something that bothers you, something that might even keep you up at night. It's when you find that axis between what you love and you hate, you find a vision for your life, and I think that's where students really lean into their inspired purpose.